Hi there my arty friends and I hope you've all been doing well and I've been missing in action because we've been busy with our third lockdown and the house has been completely full and I've not had any time to produce any tutorials for you. But I'm back and in this tutorial I'm doing a collaboration with an absolutely lovely artist named Chantal from Live Sleep Resin, she's a perfect name. And I'll list her YouTube channel down below for you. And she's a lovely person with a wonderful bubbly personality. And I'm delighted to be sharing this experiment with her. So she came up with the idea of doing resin pendants. It's not something I've ever done before, so I jumped at the chance to try some out. And we decided on faux opals, since I've seen that she uses a lot of opal flakes in her resin creations. And although I've done some opal coasters in the past, I wanted to see if I could make them in one layer instead of several. And this was definitely a challenge, but a lot of fun. And part of being an artist is coming up with fun ideas and experimenting, so both of us were definitely up for the challenge. So I have used some Druzy molds from Art for Start, and I will list everything down in the description box under this video for you. But if you don't have this particular mold, you can use some oval or round molds or any shape that you want that you can buy from Amazon that's specially made for jewellery making. I've made up some resin using one of my favourite brands, Craft Resin. I have a couple of spoons and some stirring sticks. So for this I've chosen a little tub that I've had left over called Shaved Ice. Then I'm going to use a couple of colours of this iridescent mica powder from Arteza. For this one I'm going to put a layer down with the paintbrush and just paint the underneath side of it and all over the sides. And I wanted to see if that would give that sort of opalesque shimmer at the end. So for the other one I use some periwinkle glow and for this one I am using the purple version. I think it's bubblegum or ballerina glow. And I'm going to just choose two of these little druzy mold inserts and um, just add a little bit on each base of these druzy molds. Not a lot because you don't want to hide any of the actual resin and the flakes that's going to go in later. So just a little. So you'll see in a moment that I'm going to be using just a couple of cups that are, I've used before. They're dried and once resin dries in a cup you can reuse them afterwards and I think it's the most ecological thing to do rather than throwing them away after one use. So to get started I've already prepared some resin and I'm going to be pouring just enough to fill each mould into one of these cups. And for most of them I used about a little teaspoonful of flakes but in hindsight, I could have perhaps used a little less. Don't actually need it that much for it to give that opalesque effect. Now for this first experiment, I'm just pouring it in straight into clear resin. It wasn't one of my favorites, but this was an experiment and I was happy to try it. And I did have many of those molds there, so I thought I could get away with really trying all these ideas that I had in my head. For the second one, I'm once again pouring in clear resin. I used, again, about a teaspoonful of uh, these opal flakes. And I'm using a little bit, and, and when I say a little bit, I mean a tiny drop of alcohol ink. Now again, in hindsight, I probably could have put in a couple more drops that would have been a little deeper in color and it wouldn't have hidden any of the opal flakes. But just in case, I'm just putting in a little by little until I achieve the tone that I like. So this one was to resemble kind of like a deep Australian opal. But really, I was just having fun with colours. I just chose a couple of pigments that I thought would look nice and that have a slight transparency to let the flakes show through. So as you can see, that's going in now, and it does look quite deep in colour, but as I said, I could have probably got away with a little bit more of the black. So for the third attempt, I am using some white pigment paste, and this is to resemble a white opal. And I really just put a little bit in there, because I wanted it to be quite transparent, as opals are. And adding a little teaspoonful of the opal flakes 
in there there's a little bit of dust or dirt and this is the best way I find to pick those out you take some painters tape sticky painters tape and just pull it out if you use your fingers or something sharp you risk scratching the base of those um, silicone molds now on this one you can see I've gone over a bit much so I'm just using a little spoon to scoop it out so that it's level on the surface and then I'll just use a little paper towel to wipe off the excess around the edges and for the fourth one I'm using a little bit of teal pigment paste and again I could have put a little bit more of this in than I did here and this gave an absolutely beautiful transparent sea blue opalesque color it's just gorgeous this was again one of my favorites and to top any of them up I'm just using some clear resin if um, I didn't make enough of the actual base color so you can see on most of them I will be adding a little bit of clear just over the top just so it goes it fills it up and then I'm going to use up the leftover of the blue and the leftover of the black and just mix them and this again was one that surprised me it was actually really quite pretty when it came out it looked quite natural with the two tones of the, of opals so I'm just randomly scooping out the rest um, and adding it to the base and again if I needed to I would add some clear and just top it up to the top to level it out and for this version I'm actually going to put the iridescent powder straight into the resin and see what that does and it didn't look too bad but it wasn't strictly necessary and then I decided I would add the same iridescent powder to the base and pour it on top and this was again a very successful opalesque version of this it did work out one of the best it looked quite genuine and I think it was thanks to the fact that I had actually painted on with a paintbrush the iridescent powder on the base of this mold and then for this one which I wasn't particularly impressed by I added quite a lot of this green I think it was a sage green iridescent powder with the flakes but it wasn't one of my favorites but as I said, this is all an experiment, so you win some and then you lose some. And for this version, which I think is the final version, I'm putting some of this purple in. And again, I could have put a lot more purple than I did, but um, these pigment powders are really concentrated. And if you go one step too far, it just becomes almost black it's very very opaque so I was being extra careful with it but I think I could have got away with a lot more so next time that's what I'll do I'll put a little bit more of this purple because I loved it it was really quite fun I'm not sure that there are real purple opals I'm not, I haven't really researched many but I'm not sure that there are so this was just a little fun and I thought it came out really cute and actually now that I'm looking at that um, selection I could have done a pink one you know I do like my pink so I'm zapping it a little bit on the top it's not strictly necessary because these will be the back of the pendants but well I like to do things properly so I had a little bit of um, resin left over and I've just experimented on some Adrusi insert and uh, a little bookmark and if you're a patron of mine you can see how I made that bookmark. It will be included in the extra version of this for you. And now this is the fun bit. So that's the one that had the sage green glow on it. It's not too bad at all actually. This is the one that had the two different tones of the leftover blue and the black. I love that one. That came out really nicely. This is the black one with the alcohol ink and again as I said I could have put a little bit more black in there. I think it have done it any harm. This is that blue 
which I love. I actually thought I could do with a little bit more blue, but I love the way this looks. It's just a little translucent. This is the white one with the white pigment. That's great too. And this was the most genuine of all of them because it had the white pigment paste in it and the flakes and it really does look like a, a genuine opal. I love this one. Then the purple. And this I could have put a little bit more purple in. I think it would have looked a little deeper, a little richer. But that's a lot of fun. And then this was the clear one in the middle with a little bit of the periwinkle glow. I love that one too. That one really does look like an opal. And now we're going to turn them into pendants. And if any of you have seen any of my videos where I've made napkin ring holders, it's basically the same principle. I'm using some Loctite super glue. I've got a driller with a very, very fine wood bit on the top of it. The simplest way of doing this is just to create a hole, just a small hole, um, at the top of each of these pendants and you can decide where you prefer yours to be. And then I'm going to be adding the eyelets on the top with a little bit of super glue. And then I'm going to connect a pinch bale and a couple of charms. And um, I'll do this for all of them and you can mix and match them. You can do them in different colours, metals. I've got some gold plated there and silver plated. And do try and find the thinnest drill bit that you can so that the um, hole isn't too large for the eyelet. And I don't like to go down all the way through. I like to go down maybe halfway and then use the eyelet to screw the rest of the way. And then I'm adding one of these clip bales or a pinch bale, I think they're called. And you have different types. Uh, there's this type. And I'm going to just simply thread my necklace through it and I really love the effect of that. It's quite simple. You could also add a charm to it if you preferred. And you'll see in the second example I have one of these pinch bales. And this time instead of drilling through the top with your drilling bit you can drill straight through right at the tip of your pendant and then feed it through and then clip it closed with your hands. And then once again, I'm going to thread my chain through it. And I really, really, really love the effect of this one. And then I did the same for all, all of my pendants. And this is the last one that I did, which I absolutely love and that I have been wearing constantly. And that's how you make these gorgeous opal pendants. And so Chantelle and I have had lots of fun and we've been communicating back and forward, getting ideas and bouncing ideas off each other. So after you've watched mine, click on the link below under this video description to watch hers. So I hope you've enjoyed this tutorial and uh, it will inspire you to make your own. Take good care of yourselves and I'll see you in my next video. Bye.